It's Anything Goes Friday, although first I want to share a couple of guests with you. Some interesting stuff going on in the news. Uh, D.C. DC Douglas is a voice actor. Voice actors are people who, I mean, he's a regular actor as well, but voice actors in particular are people who, who do voiceovers. They're the voices you hear coming soon to a theater near you or, you know, you hear in the ads, you know, on our show and things like that. And uh, he'd done some work for Geico. He'll tell us about that in just a moment. But he called Freedom Works, Dick Army's AstroTurf organization, Dick Army, the guy who's the lobbyist for pretty much anybody who wants to hire him, particularly Big Oil, whose Freedom Works organization was the initial sponsor of many of the Tea Party movements and paid for the buses that were driving all around the country and whatnot. And he called Freedom Works and left what might have been an impolitic uh, voicemail, but it was as a personal individual. Here's the voicemail. Hi there. I'm uh, doing a paper about Freedom Works, and I was wondering if somebody could give me a call back. Uh, I'm wrapping up, and I just uh, have one more piece of information I need to get from you guys. I uh, just need to know uh, what the percentages of people that are mentally retarded who work for the organization uh, and are, are uh, members of it. Uh, so if you could give me a call back at 323-899-1998, that would be great. Just need another percentage of people that are mentally retarded who are uh, working for Freedom Works and are following it. Uh, and oh, and one final thing also, uh, wondering uh, what your plans are, uh, how to spin it when uh, one of your members does actually kill somebody. Wondering how if you've got a, an actual PR spinning uh, routine plan for that, or are you just going to uh, take it when it happens? Just curious. So give me a call when you get a chance. Thanks so much. D.C. Douglas on the line with us. DCDouglas.com, his website. Hey, D.C., welcome. Welcome. You know, every time I hear that, that, that message now, it's, uh, it was left in, in, a, um, in the heat of a, a emotion, though it probably didn't sure. sound like it. But it's, and then I literally forgot about it after I left it, and so now it really feels like somebody like found a, uh, some tissue or toilet paper I discarded and goes, hey, by the way, you did this, right? Yeah, I know, and, and, <laughs> and, and you've apologized for it. And my apologies to you for our playing the part that had your number in it. We should have edited oh, that out. I, oh, no, 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 no worries. No, fine, actually. I think it's good that people know that I wasn't, it wasn't a crank call. I left the number because I was upset enough that I was willing to, to discuss it with somebody. But, I wanted somebody to defend their actions. But the, the, the real problem here, from my point of view, D.C., is not that you left this message and, and frankly, not that Geico... Uh, decided that they don't didn't want to be involved in politics. I mean, they, they right, pulled right, out a exactly. sponsor in the Glenn Beck show because he was going off the edge. Sure. Um, I think the, the real the real crime is, is, you know, it's not a legal crime, but the real crime here, the ethical crime, let's say, is that a, a couple of weeks later, several weeks after you left this message, uh, uh, this voicemail with FreedomWorks, when you announced on your Facebook page that you'd just gotten a gig as of, you know, doing some voice work for GEICO, all of a sudden, uh, Matt Kibbe, the president and CEO of FreedomWorks, puts this thing out, complete with your phone number, telling people to call you uh, on your on your cell phone number, and and to call Geico and get you fired. Basically, I, he didn't use those words, but it was implicit. And that, I mean, you know, I I get email, I get including death threats. I don't repost these things on the web with people's email addresses. I don't, you know, we get calls. We've got a caller line. Of, of, you know, it's got caller ID on it, so, I, you know, we, we know who's calling. I don't put people's phone numbers out. Uh, it's just it's just wrong. Absolutely, yes. And, you know, the the funny thing is, is when uh, when he finally got his wish, and that was partly my, me to blame by, by going public about this, but when he got his wish and, and Fox News picked it up and they played the message... <laughs> They edit out the phone number, oh, and, I, and, I, and I go, why, "Why'd they do that? Did Fox find it unethical?" <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And 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 you know, the the problem here is, well, the problem is the wrong word, but I mean, what this demonstrates in my mind is the hardball tactics of a corporate-funded company trying to pretend that they're into grassroots politics and they have some consideration other than making money and protecting the interests of their of their funders. Well, I really appreciate you saying most of the things that, that I've been having to tell other media outlets. I appreciate you actually seeing where, the, where, where they're, I don't want to call it a crime, but where the, the injustice lies, and it really does lie with FreedomWorks and Matt Kibbe. It, the thing that, that uh, I really want to uh, say here is the message was left on the weekend of the health care reform thing. I left it because I was mm -hmm. so ticked off by all the, the, the supposed slurs. Now I'm told apparently it's a conspiracy theory. There were no slurs 
uh, uh, her. I think we can Barney. trust Barney Frank. And I'm like, and yeah, Barney, yeah, Barney Frank's talking about that. But anyway, so I was so upset. I left the message that weekend. A week later, uh, Adam Branston or Brandon or forget his name now, um, the, the the Aaron boy for Matt Kibbe, uh, calls me um, uh, and essentially trying to determine my identity. And I think this is the other thing that that, that people need to know. They called me and recorded the phone call without letting me know. Essentially, he wanted to engage me into a, a deeper conversation about it, um, just to see what else they could get from me, um, and also were uh, uh, confirming my identity. And at that point, you know, healthcare passed, and I was no longer in that in that moment. And it's like I didn't need to talk to him. In fact, them calling me back seemed kind of funny, um, seemed to kind of reinforce the the premise of my rhetorical question. So I said. You know, that's all right. They posted that as well. And depending on what state he was calling from, that would be illegal. Right. Um, so, but, but now, they, that was a week after I left the message. So are have, you looking for a lawyer to take the case on, on, uh, on perhaps a contingency basis? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, that's out there. If somebody wants to, uh, you see, I'm not going to spend another dime uh, 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 trying to go after these people. And, and uh, because one is, I don't have the kind of, uh, I don't have the resources, obviously, they have. But uh, if they recorded you and then and then posted that recording illegally, I mean that's that's. It that, just depends on what state they're calling from. Because sure. if indeed they called from Washington D.C., they only have to have one party consent, which means the guy calling uh, says, "I consent to record this," and the right. other person doesn't need to know. That's why, like in California, people go to Nevada to to call and record messages. Right. Um, so I mean, there, really, I think if anything, the only place is tortious interference. From what, when I obviously I don't understand law, mm. but that's uh, when a third party gets in between. Tortious the, interference is screwing up somebody's business deal, and basically yeah, what they did is they screwed up your ability to make a living with Geico. Right, and uh, apparently the the bar of of proof on that is is kind of high. And, it is. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, you know, but I'm not going to walk away. I'm just because, and no matter what I do or don't do, they have a win. Um, on this way, they know they have the win. But but the other way, if I kept quiet, because all would, uh, the first uh, the first post that he put out there, it died in a day. It was not that big. But Geico dropped me anyway because of the fear. Of, because that's what they do. They generate enough fear and intimidation. This um, reminds me of slap suits. Uh, we're talking about. I was just reading about that. Yeah, yeah. We're, ta we're talking about D.C. Douglas. There's a chapter about him in my book, uh, Unequal Protection. He's the uh, author, uh, writer, director, and voice talent. Uh, DCDouglas.com is his website. He left a message over at FreedomWorks, which they then posted along with his phone number on their website and encouraged, and, and it went all the way to Fox News, encouraging people to call him and his one of his clients at that time, Geico, who uh, who dropped him. And uh, yeah, slap suits are. Um, I forget what the acronym stands for, but it's but the acronym itself, S L A P P, uh, spells out something like you know lawsuits to prevent public uh, speaking out. And where slap suits really started was back about 15 or 20 years ago, when people would just stand up at a public forum, like a town hall meeting or a city council meeting or something, and say, you know, I'm I'm opposed to this big corporation coming into town and setting up shop, or I'm opposed to you know uh, you know or I don't I don't want this company selling you know soft drinks to our kids or whatever, and and the companies would actually sue the individuals for tortious interference, you know, for, mm. for hurting their business, knowing that they never win. But the individual would have to spend $100,000, $300,000 defending right. the lawsuit. And what it did is it caused people to shut up and be afraid to speak out against corporations in America. We have a, a, about a half a minute here, D.C. Douglas, your thoughts on all this. And, and whether or not you've been silenced and whether you think this was just an attempt to silence other people. Oh, this, well, this, no, this was just a, a bald attempt on uh, Matt Kibbe's part to grab some press. Uh, I'm, I'm irrelevant. You know, throw my career under the bus. He doesn't care. I have a connection to Geico. Geico's on their boycott list. So let's go poke the, 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 the green lizard in the eye one more time. Right. And, he, and his first attempt, of course, uh, uh, didn't do it. It just poked my career in the eye. But uh, I, I, will, I won't be silenced, which is why I came back. And I may be doing some damage to my career, but at least I can sleep at night. And I feel, I feel good about what I'm doing. Well, I hope you're helping your career here. DC douglas.com if you need voice talent check it out <laughs> and and you got three million people listening to you right now i you know i hope this this does help and uh, dc thanks for being on with us thank you very much for having me